Okay, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at adding matchmaking to our simple Nakama demo project. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our Nakama demo project here. And we're going to add a little button to this that allows us to click it and find a match. So let's add some simple UI. Let's come down to UI. I'm just going to add a button. We're not going to bother about making this fancy. So let's just drag that into the middle of the screen. Just going to expand this and change the text of this button to find match. Okay, let's save that. And then we're going to come down into our Nakama connection here. Let's open that. Okay, so let's create a function to hook up to that button. Let's call it public async void find match. And for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to debug .log finding match. And let's go back into our Unity UI. Let's click on the button here. And then let's choose our Nakama connection. Let's drag that into the on click handler. And let's come down to Nakama connection and find match. Okay, let's play this and just make sure that that button is indeed hooked up. So we can see our session is printing back, our socket's printing back and telling us that we're connected. Press find match and we can see that it is indeed hooked up to that function. So let's now go back into the code and actually start hooking up some of the matchmaking code. So let's come down after we've done our debug log. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ask Nakama to give us a matchmaking ticket. Now, what a matchmaking ticket is, is basically a string that we can use then to either join a match that has been found, or we can cancel our matchmaking request by passing it the ticket and saying, we no longer want to be match made. So for now, we're not going to focus on canceling a matchmaking request, but we are going to grab a ticket and use that to then join a match. So let's say var matchmaking ticket equals, we're going to use the await keyword here. So let's say await socket dot add matchmaker async. Let's open up our brackets and let's see what this takes. So it takes a string query and you can see in there that the default value for that is an asterisk, which basically means anything. And then we take a minimum amount of players that we're expecting, a maximum amount of players, and we can also then pass in some string and numeric properties if we wish to do any further filtering of those requests. So for now, we're not going to pass in any query, but we are going to pass in a minimum and maximum amount of players. So let's just leave the string query as the default option. So let's give it an asterisk there. And for minimum players, we're going to say two. And for maximum players, we're also going to say two. And the reason for that is just purely that we're going to run two clients here. So we don't want it to be waiting around for it to try and find four players. For example, we know we're only going to run two clients here. So let's just leave it at minimum and maximum of two. And for now, for our string properties and numeric properties, we're going to leave those both at null. Now you can see that these already have default values. So you actually don't need to put these in if you don't want to. I was just showing that for clarity. Okay, so now we've got our matchmaking ticket. So what we can do now is we can save a reference to that up here. So let's create a variable up the top here and we're going to call this private string ticket. And let's come down here, ticket equals matchmaking ticket dot ticket. And that is the actual string ticket there. And we're going to save a reference to that. Okay, so one other thing we need to do is we now need to listen out for an event on the socket that tells us that a match has actually been found. So just after we connect the socket there, let's add in an event handler. Let's say socket dot received matchmaker matched. So this is an event that fires whenever we've added ourselves to a matchmaker pool and a match has actually been found. So this is going to fire this event and we're going to add a handler to this. So let's say plus equals. And then we're just going to drop in the name of the function we want to handle this. So I'm going to call this on received matchmaker matched. Okay, cool. So let's come down here and define that function. It's going to be a private function. And let's just say private void on received matchmaker matched. And here we're going to have an I match maker matched. So let's say matchmaker matched. Okay, cool. So what's happening here is we're going to press the button, we're going to start looking for a match. 
We're going to request ourselves to be added to the matchmaker pool and we're interested in a match that has any properties and we want a minimum of two players and a maximum of two players as well. So we're basically looking for only matches that have two players in. We're going to get a reference to the ticket. So imagine you're at a kiosk and you're waiting in line. You've been given a ticket and waiting for your name to be called. That's the same scenario here. You've got this ticket that you're waiting for a match to be called for. And once a match has actually been found, we've subscribed to the received matchmaker matched event here. And when a match has been found, this function is going to be called. So what we're going to say then is socket dot join match async. And in here, you can see that it wants an I matchmaker matched. The other option is that we can pass in a match ID directly and some metadata, but we're going to go with this option here. So we're just going to pass in our matchmaker matched object. And you can see that this is a weightable as well. So let's come back up here and make this an asynchronous function. Let's change this to use the await keyword here. You can also see that it returns an I match. So let's grab a reference to that by saying var match equals. And let's just inspect that match object. So we can do match dot and have a look at what's inside here. So you can see we have this authoritative property here and that's actually a Boolean value. We also have an ID for the match, a label, the presences, which is the users that are actually connected to this match, a reference to our own user presence object and the size of the match. Okay, so the only thing I want to do here is I want to print out the session ID of the users that are connected to this match. So let's first of all print out our own session ID. So let's say debug.log ID, And let's just preface that with our, our session ID. And then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of the presences in the list. Now we know we're only looking for a two player match here. So we can assume that we will only ever get one other person in this list. But let's just do it as a for each loop anyway. So we're going to say for each var user in match dot presences. Okay. And then we're just going to say debug dot log. And let's say connected user session ID and let's just put in the user dot session ID. Now let's just drop in a call on a space here to make it nice and clean. And let's go back to our Unity. One thing I'm quickly going to do is come to edit project settings. And just in the player here, I'm going to change this from full screen window to windowed. And that should be good to go just so that we don't end up with a full screen when I build this. So let's then come down to build and run. So this should just take a second to build that there. Okay, so that's open. Let's click on find match and then let's run the project in the editor. Let's click on find match here. You can see it says finding match. And in a second here, it should, there we go. It's printed out our session ID. So it's B387D. And you can see here, we're also connected with another user and their session ID is B19FB and so on and so forth. So you can see that we are now connected to a match. We've asked for a matchmaking ticket. We've specified the properties. In this case, we said that we wanted to match any match that had two minimum and two maximum users. We've ran two instances of the client and we've set them both to look for a match. They've both found each other. And you can see now that we have our own session ID printed out to the screen and also the session ID of the other client and now they are both inside a match and we should be able to send messages to each other. Now we'll go through that in an upcoming video. However, the next video, I'm just gonna show you how we did the matchmaking in Fish Game, just to solidify some of the concepts that we've explored here. So I'll see you in the next one.